Hello and welcome back to Short Story Focus. Today we'll be looking at the 1958 Hugo winner, Or All the Sea with Oysters, written by Avram Davidson. Now one thing you might notice is that we jumped from 1956 to 1958, and that is because in 1957 there was no Hugo winner. Also, in 1958, Avram Davidson was the only person nominated for a Hugo, so of course he won. And this story starts off with the F&O Bike Shop, which is run by Ferd and Oscar. Now, Ferd is a man who is described right in the story as someone who likes you know, long playing records, fine food. He likes to study history and read about science and technology, and he kind of likes the finer things in life. He is you know, a clean-cut, well-kempt man. His partner in the, uh, the running of this bike shop is someone who is called Oscar. And Oscar is uh, ginger-haired and uh, kind of rough and burly and rotund and uh, not really aware of his own limits. Uh, you know, not one of those uh, guys with a filter. It said the shop was located near the park. It did a big trade in renting bicycles to picnickers. If a woman was barely old enough to be called a woman and not quite old enough to be called an old woman, or if she was anywhere in between and she was alone, Oscar would ask her, uh, how does the machine feel to you? Is it all right? And uh, you know, they might say something like, why, I guess so. And then he would be like, well, let me ride along with you and, and uh, you know, we can make sure it's all good, so to speak. I'm paraphrasing, of course. And so that's the kind of guy Oscar is. Uh, he's, uh, he's out trying to date the customers, more or less. Oscar is basically girl crazy and uses every opportunity he can to leave Ferd all by himself tending to the shop while he rides off with some pretty girl to, you know, to have a good time. And maybe he's having sex with them. There's just the implication of that. There's never a single word of description along that line. But I suppose for 1957-58 time frame, that is very titillating. Uh, I saw it hypothesized that maybe that was why this story got uh, Hugo attention, and I'm, I'm hoping not. We come to understand that Ferd has a theory about regeneration, and he also has a theory about you know, the mundane, ordinary objects around us, and he shares some of this with Oscar, and of course Oscar is incredulous. Uh, everything just looks like accidents or happenstance to Oscar, and he sees the world very ordinarily, and, uh, you know, and he kind of justifies what he sees around him with a very simple lens. And Ferd has maybe a somewhat hysterical lens in the way that he sees things, and he makes a lot of other connections. And uh, so this makes this story momentarily compelling. There, there was an interesting science fiction slash horror slash alternate reality idea in there that did not get treated very well, nor handled very well. One of the things that really stuck with me about this story was that I did not give a shit about any of the characters. Uh, there was nothing in them within the you know, five or six pages of the story made me feel anything for either of them. So when you don't feel anything for either of the characters, it's hard to care about what happens to them. But I did feel like Ferd is handled in a very cruel manner. And so, I mean, that's something, right? If an author can handle a character badly and punish a character. I mean, you know, you've heard people talk about this, how like, you know, such and such an author is just hell on his characters. He treats them terribly. Well, you know, that makes you feel something for them, right? But it, it really doesn't come down to that. They're, they're both just cardboard shell characters. They're, they're not really all that well fleshed out. And perhaps that might be a running theme with a lot of short stories. It's hard to get a lot out of a character in 7,500 words, which is essentially what the, probably the Hugo limit is for short stories. So in that respect, at least Avram Davidson was able to get a rise out of me about one of the characters by mistreating him so badly. I would just have to say that this story by Avram Davidson is a definite loser for me. Uh, if I was going to give it a score, it would be zero, but you should still read it because it won the Hugo. And so things win for a reason and understanding those reasons can give you a greater understanding of how the Hugos developed as an award over the years. Typically, Hugo is a good indication of a story well worth reading, but not in this case. And it was the early days of the Hugo, so we'll give him a little bit of slack as far as that goes. While I was reading some of the reviews for this story, one of the reviewers uh, mentioned that she felt like she should not have finished it. Uh, she should have, uh, I think the term she used was rage, qu quit reading this story, and gone and read something else. And so you may feel like that too, but 
you know, I recommend sticking it out. It's only, it's only a few pages. And then you can go read something really good if you want to. This probably would have made a better Twilight Zone episode. I would like to thank you for stopping by and checking out my channel. I hope that you're enjoying these short story reviews. And, uh, you know, please feel free to comment. Uh, I'm always curious what people have to say about writing and short stories in general. And uh, if you will, please like and subscribe. That always helps the effort. Thank you and have a good day.